Hi everybody, welcome to CMN 103, Introduction to Creative Industries. Today I have a very special guest, I have Sean O'Boyle AM, who's going to be talking to us today about music, and just a little bit of context there. So obviously within CMN 103, Introduction to Creative Industries, we look at those key concepts within creative industries, but we also look at some of the disciplines that we offer within the creative industries at USC. And so Sean's going to be talking about all things music, his career, the opportunities that come from music, but also what we offer at USC in terms of music, performance and production, etc. So thank you very much. A great pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. So. First of all, tell me a little bit about yourself and your musical career. Well, um, I'm a composer and a conductor and a record producer. That's uh, my professional life. Um, I spent a lot of time working with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and produced about 150 albums with them um, until the internet came and um, we stopped doing a lot of albums because uh, people just wanted everything um, instant and for free. So we started doing some uh, iTunes things and things like that, but it's dropped off over the years, but that's okay. Um, and my other love uh, is conducting and composing. Um, I've composed for many orchestras and organizations around the world, including the Berlin Philharmonic and a bunch of American orchestras, all the Australian orchestras. And um, I've conducted all the Australian orchestras and many, many um, overseas from London, Toronto, New York, all sorts of places. Wow. Um, so it's been a great career and I'm looking forward to the next chapter. Okay, so what, out of everything that you've done now, what have you enjoyed most? Is there anything that you could say, that thing, that one performance, that one album, that one experience, what, what's, been so, what's been amazing for you? Well, two spring to mind. The first is um, I did an album with William Barton, the great Australian didgeridoo maestro. And um, William didn't know much about Western music at that time, and I didn't know much about the didgeridoo. Mm. Um, so, and he came to my studio and played through a whole lot of concepts on the didgeridoo and sang some um, traditional um, songs from uh, his from his land, which is at the, uh, um, at the back of Mount Isa. And then I recorded it all and listened to it and created melodies out of his rhythms. And um, we created um, a didgeridoo concerto, which we, re we recorded with Queensland Symphony uh, for the ABC. Um, and when it came to what Australia thought was the greatest hundred concertos of all times, mm. we came in at number 32. So wow. it's been very, that, that was an amazing experience to learn so much. Um, about a different culture and put it to the Western uh, music. And a couple of years ago, um, I, the second one, I had the opportunity to work with um, Dame Evelyn Lenny and write a concerto for her. And Dame Evelyn is the world's foremost um, uh, percussion soloist in, in the symphonic setting, and she's profoundly deaf. And she um, was explaining to me how she hears, and she taught herself to, to hear with her whole body. So much so that we were sitting in, um, this was in Seattle at a rehearsal, um, and the orchestra were playing um, their overture, and the strings went a little bit awry. And she turned to me and she said, I hope they don't do that in the performance. And this is a, a lady who was so inspiring. Wow. So that was, it was wonderful. Wow. So the two that you've talked about have involved working with other people. Do you think that it's, you know, do you think that it's a rich area? Music is a rich area for collaboration. Yes, music and collaboration, it's key. Right. Um, whether whether you are writing a piece um, that someone else plays, as soon as the musicians get the piece, even if you're the conductor, and, and often I'm the conductor of my own premieres, mm -hmm. um, they they bring a collaborative nature to it and um, put their own personality and their own ideas into the music, making it a far richer mm. um, tapestry. So if you had to give the students at home some advice in terms of how to be collaborative. In what, terms of... Uh, yeah, so, so what... What do students need to do? What do emerging creatives need to do to develop their skills of collaboration? Well, you, it's, discussion is, is key, and you need to find people who are fairly like-minded, but not exactly like-minded. Mm -hmm. Not like-minded enough so that you, so you all want to go to one area, mm -hmm. but you all diverge into different paths. And so if you and I collaborated mm -hmm. on something, it wouldn't become twice as powerful. It would become more than that. Um, so that's 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 my idea behind collaboration, and I love collaborating with all sorts of artists. Mm. It's a fantastic thing to mm. do. So, so we've got to dispel that myth that as a musician, you're going to be able to stay at home producing, you know, creating your own music, producing your own music, and you're going to be able to do that all on your own and still be 
as powerfully creative as you possibly can be. You're suggesting that to optimise your creativity and your creative output and skill, it's good to be engaging with other creatives as well. It is. It's, it's key. Um, for instance, I mentioned that I work with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. So that's a record company. There are producers there. There are um, publicists. There are publishers, just to name a few. Mm. And you have to have um, a, a really fantastic relationship with all those people. Then there are radio presenters who would program your music. So you have to have a good, you know. And this is this this is business collaboration, really. Mm. Um, to get your creativity out there, you need to surround yourself with lots and lots of people. So for every, probably every one artist who everyone says, oh, they're, I love them, they're singer, songwriter, whatever they are, and they're hugely famous, there will be a hundred people behind them, mm. you know, that they have collaborated with to bring that to the stage. Okay, so you talked or suggested there that there's some sort of self-publicity involved as well, some self-promotion, you have to actually be promoting your work and you can't just expect other people to know about it? That's right. You, you cannot, the old adage of sitting at home waiting for the phone to ring mm. will not happen. <laughs> okay. You have to um, go out and meet people. Mm. Um, and when you're a student, um, it's just starting off, um, I'm, I'm very portfolio based. I want all the students to have a portfolio right. of useful um, artifacts that mm. they can say, that's my work. Um, and often, that will be in collaboration with someone else. So it's their own student cohort. Um, and when I first started playing music many, many years ago, I still am friends and play with often with people who I have known for decades. Mm. Because that when I was just starting out, they're the people who I gravitated towards. Yeah, and there's a trust. You've built up that relationship over many projects over many years. Yes. So obviously that's, that's amazing and that's your career. And you mentioned something earlier about kind of enjoying and looking forward to the next chapter so and that I'm assuming involves sharing your knowledge your skill and your passion with emerging creatives yes that's true about seven or eight years ago I found myself in America and um, I was asked to do a project at a university and after I finished doing the project it was music directing a new um, jazz opera and after directing that um, they asked me to come and be artist in residence and then I had, then I discovered that I had all these, all this knowledge, and I really mm. hadn't shared it with anybody. So then I started to um, design and develop courses. I wrote a technology um, degree for this university, so in music technology, so that that they had a vehicle to um, bring a different type of student because it was very classically based, very old fashioned, okay. um, and they didn't own a microphone. By the time five or six years after that, they had recording studios and students and recording 40 or 50 projects a year. So, you know, that really worked. Mm. Um, and the opportunity here at USC, um, music's only been now, um, started in 2018. Mm. And um, so we are at the embryonic stage where I found myself, you know, five, six years ago. Yeah, and starting I can't, again. Yeah, starting again, yeah. but it's it's it's, it's an exciting mm. thing to do. So what can students, so we've got some students at home who already have thought about music and maybe they have identified that music will be their major. We might have some students at home that might identify music as a minor or as an elective. Yes. So what sort of things do we offer? Well we have, um, in our music major we have three streams. We have a performance stream, um, uh, sorry, and the streams all complement each other and everyone who does the major takes all these little streamettes I guess. So performance, music technology and composition which we call songwriting. Um, and we call it songwriting because it's um, a lot of the focus is on song. But if someone comes to me and say, I want to write game music, well, that's songs without words. It's simply all they are. So, um, uh, so you know, we can we can do all that. And they're proving very popular. Okay. About great. Or oh, about like, more than half of our student cohort um, takes the beginning technology course and the introduction to songwriting, which is wonderful. Yeah, brilliant. And so you've started to work with some local talent as well? Yes, there's some, yeah, there's some good local, there's some good talent amongst our student cohort. Mm. So, and there's some, the Sunshine Coast has wonderful musical talent. Brilliant. And they, until now, they've all headed south or gone over to Perth or, but now they can stay here mm. and, you know, stay close to their family and friends and uh, do something very meaningful. Mm. So, if you had any advice for an emerging creative, and we've got creatives here who are engaging in screen media, drama, music, creative writing. What advice would you be giving to an emerging creative? 
the advice I give is that you must always look to the past um, to, to, to look at that body of knowledge and work um, and keep in the presence, in the present, I should say, um, and use that past for the present, but you've also got to be looking forward. So there are three different um, ways, there are three different things to look at. Mm. Honour the past, be living in the present whilst aiming at the future. And that's, that's I think, that's how creatives should work as far as I'm concerned, particularly music, mm. so that you grow the, the body of knowledge and the work. Mm. And also you don't think I've created something brand new. Nobody else has ever done anything like this before. And then find out that actually <laughs> it's not brand new at all. No. So you could kind of do need to know your heritage, if you like. You do need yes. to know what you're building on from um, as, as well. So that's obviously in terms of a general outlook, look to the past, be in the present and look to see what you can do in the future. Um, what characteristics does it require? Tenacity, mm. the, uh, the, willing to, the, the willingness to go that extra distance. Mm. Um, really don't, don't do anything that um, you wouldn't do if someone was paying you for it. Like if you were producing a record or writing a song and there was an outcome for it. Mm. People tend to think that they should um, put more effort into something like that, but that's not true. You put great effort into everything. And I always say it's a bit like architecture. If I was an architect and I can barely draw a stick figure, mm -hmm. I'd love to have um, designed the Chrysler building in New York City mm -hmm. because it's so beautiful. But if I designed a little strip mall in the back of Wagga Wagga, you'd still have to put the same effort into mm -hmm. it as into the Chrysler building yeah. because it's about, it's those building blocks of effort. And learn as much about everything as you can. And diversify. Yeah, yeah. Now these seem to be some joined up messages around kind of having a broad as well as a, a specialist craft and skill but being interested in life, being interested in things because you'll bring that into your work won't you? Yes you do. Yeah okay so thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure, thank thanks you, for having me. Sean. Um, if you've got any questions relating to today's lecture obviously do ask us in the tutorial this week. You put a message up in um, Blackboard in the discussion board, but um, it's been very special having you today. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Okay, see you soon. Bye.